I think for 90% probably of the life cycle of the product, um, we always we, we tend to focus always on the 10% that builds the system. But once it's commissioned for the for the five, 10, or 15 years that the that the system is run, uh, it's run by operators. It's by people that operate plants and facilities. Um, and, and we made um, an exceptional effort in this um, in this release to try to put a lot of value for them together. So we worked with a UI UX uh, design firm in France where we basically um, did studies of what operators do on a daily basis and designed a user interface that is tailored towards them. How they can accomplish with as least clicks as possible with an intuitive interface their daily task. So that's included within the product itself. Um, the other tier of, of users are the occasional users. So the people on the other side of the firewall of the plant that are in the office that would like to see how the system performed yesterday. Um, without any scripting, without any, any complexities, you can just um, uh, rewind the data from, from the day before, which is very important to like operational managers, plant managers and other people that want to see their historical access. Um, another type of user is the IT. So one thing we did in this release is that we tried to condense our, our footprint. So, so running 100,000 I.O. on one box um, with one second updates, with 20,000 uh, variables stored every second and with 10,000 alarms. We can do that now in one box and you can have a redundant for a second box, for our, but for IT it solves the whole life cycle issue because typical those systems run on probably four to ten boxes normally. Right, so um, that's the more OSs to maintain, the more systems to upgrade and, and keep in check. Yeah. The typical users that, that can maintain systems are, are typically guys that are standard builders and there are only far and few between of those. Right? So somebody that can build all these things together or is, a, is mostly a highly educated guy that is at an SI or a corporate level that maintains these systems. But it also puts it out of reach of a lot of technicians. So that they are looking for the simplicity of um, adding a device or an instrument or whatever they need to do. Um, because those are things that happen every day in a plant. Now, something gets removed, something gets added, so, so they want to have that ownership. And what we did is we introduced the thing that we call uh, visual workflow, where he actually can go in and, and allocate an asset that he wants to create, drag and drop it graphically on the canvas, configure it through a wizard, and at that point he can do this routine, um, easily teach within 15 minutes. Standardization is a, is a big thing, so, so we've vested um, in the last three releases, uh, we've vested a, a lot of time and money into developing the best, best in class standards. And these are based on situational awareness. Um, so situational awareness is something that we work with a design company on. And basically it, there's a science behind it of how would you approach if you had a, if you were a UI UX designer and you wanted to um, uh, basically um, uh, present devices in the most optimal form so that the colors don't distract you and the colors, only right colors are used for alarming and not for, for devices. Um, so what we did there is, based on that whole situational awareness theme, we completed that whole theme with uh, the objects as well. So, so the graphics we did two years ago, and this is the completion, now they come with objects, so they come with I.O. So you can take these objects and instantiate them and they can connect directly to those devices and can, can shape into any form um, because of the object wizards. So that's where these uh, standards out of the box really are going to help people um, building systems faster, a lot faster. We think up to 60% faster than any other system. When you look at pieces of glass throughout a factory, um, typically we're always associated with the operational space. right? So I envision in the future that InTouch OMI will actually have people build application and they might not even have process graphics in it. It might be a map with an alarm grid, with uh, cameras in it, with all kinds of applications that people put together with our software and basically use and say, yes, I can use this instead of, instead of this three or four windows that somebody has to look at. And now it's all in context. It's up to your imagination of what you can build. You get all the tools from us to build whatever you need to build. And that's really that the larger picture that we have in mind going forward is that this should be a, a collaborative platform that everybody can use and everybody just uh, takes advantage of what others have built all the time.